What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to find the extraneous solution because it can be confusing for students. Like we find a solution, why is it that it does not work? There's a couple things that you need to know to be able to understand how to do this problem as well as how to be able to understand the extraneous solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first property. So this is what we call the product property of logarithms. Basically says as long as you have a logarithm with the same base here and you're adding them, then you're going to take the product here of their two arguments. Now the next one is just the standard definition of a logarithm. It says the logarithm base B of X is going to be equal to Y. Now the best way I think for me to be able to understand what a logarithm is, what it's trying to obtain, or what we're looking for is to look at it in exponential form. So therefore I can rewrite this as in this example, when I'm trying to go ahead and understand here, when I'm trying to solve for y, my base raised to y is gonna equal this argument in this case. Now, what's really important about this is you gotta think about this. If I take any number, like let's say the number two, if I raise it to the second power, that's gonna equal four. If I take the two and I raise it to the negative second power, that's gonna equal a one over four, right? We're going to reciprocate it. So there's no number in the real number system that I can take two and raise it to that's gonna make this value equal to negative. That is why x is always going to be a positive. And so therefore you can and say, taking a logarithm of a number here, this argument always has to be positive. That's gonna be a part of our understanding for finding the extraneous solution. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do in this case, when we have more than one logarithm, is to simplify, because we're only gonna to wanna to solve here with one logarithm in this case. What we recognize here is I have two logarithms, they have the same base, and now um, I recognize that we're adding them. So therefore, this brings up my memory of like, oh yeah, properties of logarithms, properties of logarithms. That's what I'm gonna to wanna to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this now as one logarithm using the product property. So I just rewrote the five plus X because again, it doesn't matter if it's five plus X or X plus five. But now we know, recognize here, I can just multiply this down. Therefore that's gonna be an X squared plus five X. So now we can do a couple different things. We can understand this as the definition here of a logarithm, and we can rewrite it in exponential form. Preferably as a teacher, basically what we wanna do is have these as a base six and raising them to both power because that's gonna be understanding our properties of equality, basically doing the same thing to both sides. So what we're gonna do is like exponentiate with a base six to both sides. Therefore, we can use the property of logarithms to get rid of this. Sometimes though, when you're first learning, that can be sometimes confusing. I'm going to default to the basic way and just kind of go with the basic understanding or definition of a logarithm and rewrite write in exponential form. So therefore, definitely though, as a teacher, I would probably also say exponentiate the base six on both sides, but let's do it this way for today. Therefore, if I rewrite this as in my exponential form, I'm gonna take my base, right B, and I'm gonna raise it to the argument's power. So therefore it's gonna be six squared, and that's gonna be equal an x squared plus five x. All right, so now hopefully you recognize here that I have a quadratic equation. So this is 36 equals x squared plus five x. And the one thing that you should always remember is that whenever you have a quadratic, especially when you have a, an x squared and a linear x, is set it equal to zero to solve. Once you have it set equal to zero, then you can apply the quadratic formula. You can apply factoring, you can apply completing the square. So I'm just gonna subtract a 36 on both sides. And therefore now I'm gonna start to see, all right, what ways can I go ahead and look to solve this, right? I have a quadratic set equal to zero. I have now everything under my tool belt. All right, so, Okay, I'm going to, first I want to always look into factoring, right? Because factoring is the quickest, fastest, easiest way to solve a quadratic. What two numbers multiply to give me 36 that are going to add to give me a positive five? Immediately, I'm thinking like 12 and three, but those don't have a difference of five in them. So then I go to the next one, which would be nine and four. And hey, they always have a difference of five. Um, since this has to be positive though, I know it's going to be a positive nine. All right, now that I've created as a product of factors equal to zero, I can multiply the zero product property and solve. Okay, so now what we have done is we have found two solutions, right, to this original equation. But it's very important, I want you to understand this. I'm gonna put a box around this because back in like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, or you know whatever class you might have taken, this could have been a problem, standalone problem, right? Zero equals x squared plus five x minus 36 has two solutions, x equals negative nine, x equals four. Good, we did it correctly. However, that is actually not the problem we are solving. We are solving this problem, right? So that's what's so important about extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that you get that satisfy like this simplified solution, but they do not satisfy the original equation. So again, extraneous solutions are solutions that you find, but they do not satisfy the original equation. You might be thinking, well, what do you mean? We found these two solutions. How do they not satisfy this equation? That is when we go over here. Remember we talked about, you cannot take the logarithm of a negative number, right? There's no number that you can raise to a power that's gonna make that negative in our real number system. So then it starts going to thinking, it's saying, all right, right? If I plug these numbers in, is that gonna make any of my arguments negative? And you, let's start with negative nine. If I plug in negative nine in for X, that becomes a negative four. That's not gonna work. I plug in 
here, that's not gonna work. So this is what we call an extraneous solution. Let's go and check four. So four, plug it in, that makes nine, we're good to go. Plug four in here and that's four. So therefore you can see that X equals four is my only solution um, to this logarithmic equation. So hopefully this video gave you some help in understanding extraneous solutions. If so, you're gonna love the next video I have for you here.